beyond mind the realm of buddhas the realm of buddhas lies beyond mind buddha says that all that we are is the outcome of our thoughts mind is made up of your thoughts all thoughts arise as an interaction between objects and beings and conditions created by the memory understanding and ego sense if a man speaks or acts with a thought arising out of his inner oneness happiness follows him like a shadow one wonders how does this relate to no mind because man can think purely and control his thoughts and thus he can obtain happiness then why no mind seems to appear to be contradictory to controlling thoughts there are three possibilities of the mind one the evil mind which lives in a destructive way it always thinks of destroying and in the process enjoys creating suffering for people to such a mind buddha says misery will follow like a shadow if you want to create misery for others in fact you are creating misery for yourself ultimately if you are against existence existence will be against you because existence is a mirror that echoes you if you abuse abuse will come and fall on you if you sing a beautiful song the song will come back and shower upon you whatsoever you give comes back to you a thousand folds whatsoever you sow you will reap a thousand folds so the evil mind is followed by misery the evil mind is one who enjoys torturing destroying and murdering tamur lum chengiz khan adolf hitler and joseph stalin are the examples of the evil minds then there is the holy mind it is against the evil mind it is just diametrically opposite to the evil mind it is creative it enjoys seeing people happy it helps serves and rejoices bestowing happiness on others it loves to see people happy happiness follows them like a shadow to this mind the holy mind yet still there is one thing more that you are not aware of if happiness is there then just beyond it somewhere unhappiness will also be present if unhappiness is there then somehow on the boundary happiness will be present both go together the evil mind is followed by misery and hell but somewhere hell is always followed by heaven the holy mind is followed by happiness but happiness is followed by unhappiness the cycle goes on because happiness and unhappiness are not separate they are not two phenomena instead these are two sides of the same coin how can you be happy if you cannot be unhappy if you have forgotten what, what unhappiness is you will have forgotten happiness too it is the realization of one that gives you the experience of the other if you have never known disease you will not be able to feel your well being it is impossible to keep alert that you are healthy sometimes illness is a must you cannot write with white ink on a white paper 
Not that you cannot write, certainly you can write, but nobody will be able to read it, including even you. Contrast is always necessary. To write with white ink, you need a black piece of paper. The black functions as the background. Against the black background, the white ink becomes visible, so is life. Your happiness is like the white ink that requires a black background. The holy man lives in happiness, but his happiness is a figure and unhappiness is there like the background. Without unhappiness there, he will never be able to know what happiness is all about. Without contrast, there is no way to know. So ultimately the holy mind and the evil mind are not separate as two minds. Instead these are two sides of the same coin. The saint and the sinner exist together. The saint can turn into a sinner any moment and sinner can turn into saint any moment. They are not far away. They live very close by. Also they are very intimate. Their boundaries meet and merge into one another. Yet still there is a third mind. Know this as no mind. It is neither saint nor sinner. Neither happiness nor unhappiness. The duality is gone. The duality is dropped completely. It is beyond duality. It has experienced beyondness. Then there is silence and serenity. Then there is peace. All turmoil vanished. Remember even happiness is a turmoil. So too happiness is a kind of fever. You like it? That is one thing, but it is fever. Have you not watched it? When you are happy, you start getting tired of it. Once in a while it is okay but you cannot remain happy for long. Sooner or later you become fed up with it, it is tiring. So too you become tired of unhappiness one day. And then from an unknown horizon, happiness lurks down. If you are too happy, you will not be able to sleep in the night. In the same way, if you are too unhappy or sad, then too you will not be able to sleep in the night. You will not be able to relax in either of the two situations. Happiness becomes attention. Both are tired. When happiness tires you, you move towards unhappiness. When unhappiness tires you, you start moving towards unhappiness. This is how the pendulum of life goes on swinging from one extreme to another. No mind is a totally different thing. It has nothing to do with the mind, happy or unhappy, holy or unholy. It is simply the taste of the beyond. Do you remember when Bodhidharma went to China? The emperor who asked him a few questions. One of the questions was, I have created many monasteries, made many Buddha temples, I have opened my tragedy for the spread of Buddha's message. Is it not holy? And Bodhidharma laughed and responded, What is holy in it? It is a kind of business. You are planning for the other world. You are hoping for heaven. There is nothing holy in it. It is as unholy as anything else. What does Bodhidharma mean by this? He is saying that your so-called holy acts are bound to be followed by unholy things. Deep down the very desire makes everything holy. Deep down the very desire makes everything unholy. Emperor was embarrassed shocked and angry and he said, Then what do you think is not Buddha holy person? And Bodhidharma laughed again and responded, Buddha is neither holy nor a person. He is utter emptiness. 
Buddha is neither holy nor a person. He is utter emptiness. How can holiness exist there? It will be a kind of dirt. He is utterly silent. He is emptiness, em embody. He is the embodiment of emptiness. He is emptiness personified. The state of mind is neither holy nor unholy. Buddha is neither a saint nor a sinner. He has transcended the duality. Saint and sinner, holy and unholy, good and bad, right and wrong, low and high, these are all dualities. Two sides of the same coin. Buddha has transcended duality. Buddha is transcendence. Remember, from an evil mind you can become a holy mind. However, this is not real transformation. It is only a question of degrees. And you have not gone beyond the mind yet. Only no mind can liberate you. When mind dissolves totally, no mind evolves. Therefore, never try to become a holy person. Holy persons are unholy. And never try to become saint because all that effort is nothing but an ego trip. It is like mind playing a new game. And the game is subtle. Just drop that holy nonsense of being holy or unholy. Go beyond the saint and sinner, beyond both darkness and light, and heaven and hell. This is the first step. Beyond is the realm of bliss. Out of this arises a totally new world, which you have not even dreamt of. There is utter serenity, peace, harmony and oneness. No turmoil and not even a single ripple arises. That state when there is no ripple is Buddha. This is the realm of Buddhas, Krishnas, Christs and Mahamans. There is neither pain nor pleasure because pleasure is not different from pain and pain is not different from pleasure. Both are two sides of the same coin. Then what happens there? There is utter emptiness or silence. Buddhas are silent about it. Nothing can be said about it because whatsoever can be said will become part of duality. If you say it is bliss, then you will think it against the backdrop of misery. If you say it is light, then you will think it is not darkness. If you say it is summer, then you will think it is not winter. If you say it is a kind of flower, then you will think it is not a thorn. But you will start thinking in terms of duality. Thoughts bring duality. Buddha remains absolutely silent about it. The reason is that it can only be expressed in silence. Truth is experienced in silence and lost in the noise and the clatter of the mind. It is silence. How can you express silence through sounds or words? You cannot.